Well, good morning. How do you do? Lots of surprises are waiting for you. Are your bar cart ready? Go. It's time to show the JP and Ted show. Well, well, welcome to another edition of the JP and Ted show. I'm Ted Harris, and here we have, have the hippest call we have, have Reginald. Hey, how are you doing? Nice to see you. And today is a very special day of the JP and Ted show. I was introduced by new sidekick, and Giant Vince, and here he is. Is a problem with Giant Vince? We did sign that, that, that contract, you knew that paycheck. That song. Thunder, lightning, the way it looks is frightening. It got a knock on wood. It got a knock, knock, knock on wood. You got to knock, knock, knock on wood. You got to knock, knock, knock on wood. This story is about ten rather close relations of ours who seem to get into almost exactly the same kind of trouble we do. All ten of these jolly characters lived in the same neighborhood and were all good friends, uh, generally speaking. Each of them had a bicycle and each took care of his bicycle in exactly the took care of himself. One day, they held a group think and decided to have a picnic in a little park just nine blocks away. Now, that doesn't sound far, but a lot can happen in nine blocks, right? Well, sound off out there. I said, right? Right. So, they all ran home and made themselves sandwiches. <laughs> I know that doesn't sound too likely, but of course, human. Then, they hurried back, all ready to go. Now, one of the ten was a rather hungry type. His name was Slim Jim McGuffney, and his picnic lunch was what you might call a uh, portable banquet. Right? Right. Slim knew that his big sack would be hard to handle, so he asked Orville Slump if he'd carry it for him. Orville had a basket on the rear of his bike. He was a good sort, and he answered, okay. Some of the others noticed this and asked him if he'd carry theirs, too. Orville answered graciously, well, I guess so. And naturally, everybody else did the same until Orville's rear basket looked like a chuck wagon. At last, they were ready to go, and at a given signal, they went. Now this is Ruthie Toot Jasperson. He had the newest bike in the bunch and he was as proud of it as he could be. He made it a point to get in the lead and there he intended to stay. It would seem that Ruthie Toot was a slam bang go-getter headed for big things in life, right? Right. But when you have to be first all the time, there are a few things you find you don't have time for. Such things as making hand signals. Oh, he knew very well that bike riders are supposed to signal just like auto drivers. Hand down for slow or stop. Hand up for right turn. Hand straight out for left turn. But pretty soon, he began to feel silly making so many signals to stay out in front. So he skipped one to rest his poor old tired arm. Just one signal, once. 
At this point, Rooty Two Jasperson left the party. This charming little thing was actually christened Tinkerbell MacDillingfiddy. She's a sweet and lovely girl, but she has a rather poor memory. Sometimes she forgets to brush her teeth. Sometimes she leaves homework at home. And sometimes she forgets to look at traffic signals. Now she knows that she should. She knows that she should ride just like auto drivers drive. But she's so busy being happy all the time that her little thoughts tend to wander and Oh, dear, dear, they're wandering again. Mm -hmm. Here she goes. <laughs> Exit Tinkerbell MacDilling Fiddy. She forgot now and then. <laughs> Now, let me introduce Philip Flugel. He's a star athlete, the president of his class, an honor student, and he has the handsomest profile in school. Just look at it, will you? Now, Flug, as his friends call him, has one little flaw in his character. He is very easily bored. Right now, he's asking himself why everyone has to go up this side of the street. It's so samey. So, proving that even a class president can make mistakes, he decided to ride against traffic. Oh, he knows that auto drivers never do this, and that he should follow the very same traffic rules. But he's in the mood to do something different. Anyway, there are no policemen around to see him. Philip Flugel is no longer bored. You've probably wondered about this fellow on foot. Well, his name is Mosby Pomegranate. He is splendid in dramatics, but he works so hard memorizing his lines that he doesn't get around to a lot of other things. He never made it down to register his bike and get a license for it. He knows very well that a license makes it easy to find out who he is if he's in an accident and makes the bike easy to trace if it's lost or stolen. That's his trouble. Last week, while he was rehearsing the lead in King Kong, someone rode off with his bike. He went to the police, but of course they couldn't help him since it had no license or registration. He stomped out of the police station angrily and he's been stomping ever since. Farewell, Mosby Pomegranate, victim of fallen arches. <laughs>